Hello from ChemHelp ASAP. Our topic for this video is one of the fundamental purification methods, recrystallization. Recrystallization is a purification method and is based on differences in solubility of a molecule and any impurities. A key limitation to the use of recrystallization is that the desired molecule must be a solid. In general, molecules are more soluble in a solvent at higher temperatures and less soluble at lower temperatures. This temperature dependence can be leveraged to purify a molecule. Choosing the correct solvent is critical and it's a bit of an art that is refined through experience. This method works best on molecules that are already reasonably clean, maybe 80% pure or better. Let's sketch a simple solubility curve. Bam! It, it's probably not linear, but this is good enough for our purposes. The idea is that we are going to dissolve our crude material in a minimal amount of solvent at high temperature where solubility is also high. At this point, the solution will be saturated. Once dissolved, we'll then cool the solution. As solubility decreases, the product will precipitate. The more we drop the temperature, the more product will precipitate. Now, even at low temperature, some product will remain dissolved and will be lost when the solution is filtered. This product loss is inevitable. Don't worry about it. Minimize the loss through using as little solvent as possible, primarily by dissolving the product at as high a temperature as possible. Note that impurities in the crude mixture will have their own solubility curve. Recrystallizations are successful when the solution does not become saturated in impurity, even when cooled, so that the impurity remains in solution and is removed during the filtration. We're going to demonstrate a recrystallization of M. bromosis cinnamon. This is a common lab reagent that tends to release bromine upon storage. The impure material gains a yellow color. Researchers often recrystallize MBS before use and the standard recipe is 30 grams NBS in 300 milliliters of water. A reference to this procedure is in the video description. Here is our recrystallization getting ready to start. Right here we have 300 milliliters of water. It's, three, uh, it's just regular water, um, distilled water, and we are heating this up to boiling. So it's not there yet, but the hot plate is at 250 degrees, so it, it should heat up before too terribly long. It's getting uncomfortable to touch, so that's a good sign. And right here, the star of the show, this is our N. bromosacinamide. N. bromosacinamide is a white solid. And yet, this is definitely not a white solid. Looks like a bunch of sulfur or something like that. Well, NBS over time tends to generate a little bit of Br2, and Br2 imparts this color. So what we want to do is we want to recrystallize this and get a nice white solid back. There is a recipe out there for recrystallization of MBS, and it involves 300 milliliters of boiling water and 30 grams of NBS. So that's the procedure that we will be following. Once this is up to boiling, we'll then add our solid into the water and we'll start this recrystallization. Okay, so this water is now, it is getting pretty hot. It's hot enough that I'm gonna go ahead and add the NBS. So that's a nice, nice wide stem powder funnel. And we'll transfer this in. This might plug up the funnel. Some of these pieces are pretty big. It's okay. So of course, as it's mixing in, we are dissolving. Get in there, you rascal. Crunch, crunch, crunch. We are dissolving the solid and everything is going in solution. That's, um, oh darn it, there it goes again. <laughs> Okay, this might take a few minutes. I'll try to talk over it. So everything's slowly going in solution as it goes into the hot water. And that includes our desired embromosis cinnamid and our impurity, which is m mostly bromine. Chug, 
chug, chug. Now notice, we, we started with a lot of water in here. It's because we're following a recipe. This is a... This is a substance that people very often, um, very often use in lab. And so when you buy it, it tends to be a little bit impure. So anybody uses it in lab, if they're concerned about the purity, everybody who buys it needs to recrystallize this material. So there is a published procedure on this. Not all substances have a published procedure because, you know, not all compounds are bought and then purified. Lots of times you use recrystallization you're going to use it on substances that, that are unknown, have never been made before. So, while I'm showing this procedure for recrystallization, toward the end of the view video, we will talk about how you recrystallize um, unknown substances. And it's going to be a little different from this. But, but the idea is the same. We want to dissolve our solid in a, hopefully a minimal amount of a solvent. And then when we cool that, and we'll do that at a hot te high temperature, and then as we cool this down, the solubility will decrease, and our product will precipitate out, and hopefully leave all of those impurities in the solution. So that's the idea, and, and then that's what we're doing here. But uh, the procedure and the process is a little bit different if you've never worked with the compound before, or you don't have a procedure to follow. So we're going to let this stir a little bit, and heat, and hopefully we'll get this all uh, dissolved, and we'll have a nice clear solution. Okay, so this, this clearly hasn't dissolved, but I want to come in and bring up a couple points. One, uh, because I'm impatient, I turn up the heat. It now says 340 degrees Celsius, and I turn up the stir because, because I'm impatient, and I want this to go quickly. But well, one thing I'll note is that when, when you stop this stir from going, you see that they're, they're still clearly solid. That hasn't dissolved, but that amount of solid is less than what I put in. So when you're dissolving things in a reaction it's important to kind of take a mental note how much solid is still left is that amount of solid getting smaller um, is it staying the same these are just part of the observational process because if if i felt like this wasn't dissolving then i might be encouraged to heat it up even faster or if if, if we're just staying the same amount of solid so uh Making good observations helps drive your decisions on how you're going to move forward. And that's true for this type of recrystallization or whether you're working with a, a new unknown solid. Okay, now we have just about everything dissolved. Almost. There's still a little bit of solid in there, probably from the, the largest chunks that made it through the funnel. Note that if I turn off the stirrer, even though I'm heating the hot plate quite a bit, we're still not really boiling. So there's a little bit more room to get hotter, for the solution to get hotter. And as we continue to get close towards uh, boiling, a boiling point of water, we'll probably eventually get... Um, it, everything will go into solution. Now you may say, with it, but the, the hot plate says 340 degrees. How can this not be boiling? Well, in, in a fume hood especially, you just have a huge amount of airflow past this flask. So even though the surface of the hot plate may be far in excess of 100 degrees, that doesn't mean the solution has actually achieved that temperature because you have all this air cooling. So the temperature of your heating surface does not always translate into the temperature of your flask because there, there's so much airflow in here, which of course is good. It's a safety feature. So let's turn this down. Still no boiling. Okay, well we're going to let this go a little bit more. I think all those bits will go into solution and then we'll, we'll see what comes next. Alas, we have everything dissolved and in fact it's starting to boil just a little bit. So we've pretty much achieved peak temperature. Not surprising, everything's in solution. So now, What's next? Well, we dissolved everything in a roughly minimal amount of solvent. Now we need to let this cool down. And as we let it cool down, the solubility of embromosacinamide in water will decrease. And as it decreases, it should precipitate out. And so we'll hit saturation of our of, of, of embromosacinamide. Hopefully we never hit saturation in these other impurities so they will stay in solution. So let's kill the stir and kill the heat. And I am not going to carefully control how this cools, but I'm just going to take this off of our plate. Put it 
gently and <laughs> still trying to pick up some stirring from the stir plate. Now we will let this stand and cool a little bit and once it's come closer to room temperature I'll put it in an ice bath. So a lot has happened since our last clip. Uh, everything's on ice. Here's our material. Notice we got all this solid. It, I don't know if it's colorless, but it's nearly colorless what's floating in there. And the color seems to be staying in the aqueous layer. So that's on ice, nice and cold. Hopefully everything has now precipitated out of solution. Back behind it, I have some water that I also have on ice. We ultimately have to filter this material. And when we do the filtration, we're gonna rinse it with additional water. And to make sure we minimize the amount of any solid that would dissolve in that water, we're gonna try to make sure that water is nice and cold. So you normally have pre-chilled solvent when you do a uh, filtration. Over here, we have a sidearm flask. Here is a Buchner funnel with a rubber adapter. We have a hose line that goes to the house vacuum. And we have a filter paper in here. So our first order of business is to seat the filter paper. And we're gonna use water for that. We use water because typically you seat your filter paper with whatever your solvent is in your recrystallization. If this were 50% ethanol, 50% water, we'd use 50% ethanol, 50% water to seat the filter paper. Now I'll turn on the vacuum and make sure everything is seated. All the holes in the funnel are covered. And now we'll just take this and filter away. Okay, don't go too crazy on me. There we go. Good, good, good. Let's do a little bit more. <laughs> okay. And we'll do another batch. Dang, this looks just so beautiful. Okay. And of course, you got to have a stir bar in there to mess everything up. So as you can see, there, there's a lot of solid left in here. So what are we going to do? We're going to use a little cold water. Rinse this out. So, and I should have shown you this before I did the rinse. Let's let that drip a little bit. Okay, th this is not going to be easy to pull out. Um, tell you what, let, 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 let's look at the... Um, let's just move the camera up. You can see that's pretty nice looking white solid in there. Um, I would like to rinse this a little bit more. Now, you don't want to just rinse and rinse and rinse, because remember, there is apparently some solubility of this material in water. So don't just feel like you got to give this thing a huge bath. You just want to rinse it to the point that you feel like you've rinsed it off the impurities. And once you've rinsed the impurities, you should be done. Okay, great. So this is now going to... Uh, filter. We're sucking air through here. This will slowly air dry. Uh, air drying is not something that happens in just a couple minutes. We'll need to let this go. I'll probably leave this overnight and then when we come back we'll have the mass of our product and we'll get to see how much of this beautiful white solid um, with the following removal of the stir bar we actually get from our original 30 grams of crude material. Here is our final purified and dried material. This is around a little over 20 grams. And remember that we started with 30 grams. So our recovery is somewhere between 65 and 70%. Now that's not terrible. We lost material, but you always lose material in a recrystallization. Now, with the benefit of the, that you get from losing that material is you do get rid of impurities. So look at that yellow color in that the immaterial, uh, impure material that's left in the residue on that beaker. So we, we did lose some material, but we gained higher purity material. And so that's the trade-off of recrystallization. While recrystallizing NBS is a great demonstration, during research, you often make molecules that are unknown. You won't know the ideal recrystallization method. You don't, won't know which solvent to use. Ideally, you want a solvent that gives high solubility at high temperature, low solubility at low temperature. 
Choosing a solvent requires experimentation, but solvents like ethanol and acetonitrile are very common choices. In order to minimize the amount of solvent used, solvent is added slowly to the heated crude mixture until everything dissolves. This is much like a titration. Add acid or base until you reach an endpoint. In a recrystallization, you add solvent until you reach an endpoint. The product dissolves. Cooling then precipitates the product. During filtration, it is important to use cool solvent during washes to avoid re-dissolving the product in the funnel. That completes our quick introduction to recrystallization. Recrystallization is the, myth, is the method of choice for purifying many molecules, including small molecule drugs that are typically found in pills. As always, thank you for watching. Please subscribe, like, or leave comments or questions. Take care.